Hello everyone and welcome to Superman Homepage Live, brought to you by supermanhomepage.com, the number one Superman fan site in the world. In this, our March 18th, 2024 show, we're going to be covering a range of topics, a little bit of a t tidbit on uh, what's happening with the upcoming Superman movie, we're going to be talking about the recent Superman in concert uh, event that took place in LA, we've got comic book stuff to talk about, action figures, auctions, and so much more. And joining me tonight, once again, is my good friend Mark Lax, who is in an undisclosed uh, location where uh, the internet is a little bit on the iffy side, but uh, we'll try to push through. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Hello, Steve. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Yourself? <laughs> All right. Very good. Very good. Yes, uh, we've got a few things to talk about tonight. Not a big week in the world of Superman. It's been... A little bit quiet, so we might get time to talk to folks no. tonight who might want to call in. And for those who are interested in doing that, uh, then you can simply use the QR code that is on the screen right now, and you can get involved uh, by going to supermanhomepage.com slash live, or as I said, you can uh, scan the QR code on your screen right now from your smartphone. That'll take you into the green room where you'll be able to still watch and listen to the show live, and I... Uh, but uh, we will bring you on when we get a chance, which will probably be in the second half hour of tonight's program. So if you're not too shy and you want to get on, then you can do that. Otherwise, if you are a little bit shy and don't want to get on the phone tonight, uh, then you can simply go to uh, either YouTube or on Facebook. Uh, there are the comments sections there. Mark and I can keep an eye on that feed to react to whatever comments or questions you might have and we will react to them as necessary. Uh, if you're on YouTube, you might want to try a super, um, what are they called? Su super, super chat. Uh, all you do is click on the dollar symbol there, a slider will appear on your screen, you decide on the dollar amount you're willing to donate, and we will feature your comment, your super chat live on the screen as we go along tonight. There are also super thanks and super stickers that you can test out. People telling me my microphone is low, I'm trying to, let me see if I can boost that a little bit for you. I'm not. See if that helps at all. Um, yeah, it's a little bit lower. But uh, yeah, I'll try to make sure it's right in front of my mouth and get sure that the uh, the uh, volume is good. So yeah, hopefully it's a little bit better now that I've... Uh, my end, I hope I'm sounding okay. Yeah, no, you sounded fine on your end. So uh, yeah, uh get involved in tonight's show. We want to thank our sponsors and our patrons. Uh, we want to thank uh, Douglas Meacham, John Patrick Van Pelt, Tina Murray, and C. Ralph Adler for their support. And you can join those fine folks and be a sponsor of the show. All you have to do is click the join button on YouTube, or you can go to patreon.com slash Superman homepage. So that's a great way to get involved and make sure that the website stays relevant and stays operational so get involved uh in the sponsoring of our show all right so let's get into tonight's program and just quickly off the top uh talking about the upcoming superman movie uh we have heard haven't reported this on the website at all but uh it, it's kind of relevant enough to be able to announce here that james gunn has said that Superman, the upcoming film, will be filmed for IMAX, completely in IMAX. So uh, you'll be able to watch it completely in the great big screen. Big, big screen. Yeah, that's a 3D. Uh, I think 3D is kind of fallen. Seeing it on the, you know, seeing it on the big big screen would be yeah especially yeah. with the sound and you know yeah it would be awesome it would be a, fag a magnificent so if he's completely filming it for the big screen that's uh for the imax screen that's great obviously you'll still be able to watch it in your own regular cinema uh or theater uh, at regular size or uh, whatever size they have they have various sizes and things these days obviously, obviously imax is the biggest um, but, uh, you know, yeah, they have, um, various screens and, and um, you know, massive, uh, as comfortable, comfortable chairs. Some places do bean bags that you can sit in. 
some places there are recliner chairs. <laughs> uh, some people you get some places they bring in, bring your food in here in Australia called Gold Class. Um, you know, so there are all different ways of uh, watching a movie in the theaters these days. Um, I think there's even some places where you know the seats shake and uh, if there's smoke, the smoke comes out. All that's kind of they're really trying to obviously jazz up the theater experience. <laughs> So that, um, yes. you know, because our screens are getting bigger and our, our sound systems in our homes are getting more sophisticated. So whatever they can do to bring fans back into the theatres um, is something that they're aiming to do uh, more and more. So IMAX for the upcoming Superman film makes sense. Even if the movies now are for just for the bigger the bigger movies, you know, out, uh, most of those are, are streaming now, you know, those are all movies on Netflix. And you, but uh, so yeah, so they're really, they're really going all out now. Yeah, indeed. They are. They're definitely going all out to get fans back into the theaters now that COVID's, you know, pretty much over and done with and fans are getting more comfortable going back into crowds and, lo and locations like that. So uh, Superman 2025, shot in IMAX. Uh, hopefully it's going to be good and worth the trouble. All right, so uh, that's really all we have this week for the upcoming Superman movie. There were some leaked photos of the engineer costume, um, uh, one of the side characters or one of the other characters included. Uh, I'm going to put up a poll on our website shortly um, in regards to spoilers and leaked photos to see what the fans want how they want us to treat those situations. I'm not a big, uh, big fan of, you know, putting spoiler material up on the website or leaked photos because they're obviously being um, illegally captured somehow. Sure, if they're, they're filming in public and, you know, they know that there are people up in the windows of buildings surrounding the, the, sh the photo shoot or film shoot that, uh, you know, that things are going to get out there. But if, um, you know, if it's someone sneaking in or doing things that they probably shouldn't be doing to get uh, set photos on a closed set, then, uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of that. If, you know, we've seen, we saw with the Supergirl uh, in The Flash when they leaked photos of Sasha Calais being strung up on, you know, for the, those shots and, People started pulling apart the costume and talking about the lack of the cape and and the way that the the ribs you know the the the, the um the abs area of the costume looked fake and, and then you get to the big screen and it's completely different you know you you don't realize how yeah. uh, much goes into post production on these things so you really can't judge anything by leaked photos when the studio is ready to show us something they'll show us what they're ready to show. Yeah, I mean, you know, you you don't know now what what are what's leaked and what's you know they put out for a peak, and you just you, you don't know anymore. No. So you got to be careful, but that's false. That's not what it's supposed to be, and you know. Yeah, well, there was that's a, understood. Uh, there was a supposedly a leaked photo of David Correntswet in the Superman costume, which proved to be an AI generated. Uh, image, you know, and James Gunn debunked it and said, you know, it's, it's obviously it's fake. I mean, look at his wrists or look at the, the people holding the cameras that supposedly are around him shooting. So it's getting even harder to be able to work out what is real and what isn't real based on uh, the images that are getting put out there. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's tricky. So we'll be obviously very careful about looking uh, at what we post on the website in regards to leaked material or spoilers. So uh, you can be sure that Superman homepage has you covered there. All right, uh, so pushing on and we move into stuff that we can talk about. And uh, the other night on Friday, March 14th, the Los Angeles Philharmonic Orchestra performed Superman in concert at the Walt Disney Concert Hall in Los Angeles. And our good friend and sponsor, Douglas Meacham, was there in attendance and uh, shared a number of great photos uh, from his time at the Superman in concert. Obviously, it is what is, if you're not sure what that is or you haven't heard of it before, uh, 
it is watching Superman the movie with a live orchestra playing live to screen. So you're watching the film and the orchestra is playing the soundtrack as you watch the film, which is awesome to do. And uh, it seems like a great time was had by all. Uh, there was a obviously a program uh, with all the details there. And uh, Douglas got to rub shoulders with some of the celebrities. Uh, there he is having a drink pre-show with um, Aaron Smolinski, who was obviously baby Kal-El in Superman the movie. And then Doug caught up with our good friend Jim Bowers from Caped Wonder and uh, also uh, got photos of Ilya Salkind, who was obviously one of the producers of the film. And he's there with uh, David M. Petru, who uh, was the author of the behind the scenes account of the film published the book about the making of superman the movie um also there is a uh, doug with uh Ilya as well and caught up with mark mcclure who obviously played jimmy olsen also got a photo with aaron and sarah douglas sarah obviously not standing still there for that one moving faster than a speeding bullet and got blurred out uh <laughs> Also took some photos there yes. with Jim Bowers again, and uh, Jim uh, is standing there with uh, a couple of other dignitaries, including uh, Peter McDonald, the com camera operator for the first two Superman films, and was second unit director for Empire Strikes Back, of all movies. Uh, Madeline Most uh, was camera assistant for the first film, and uh, so there they are there. And uh, final photo there, uh, Douglas having a photo with David M. Petru and Katja Kopatsky, who was assistant continuity supervisor. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, some great moments, great photos caught by Douglas Meacham, who, as I said, attended the Superman in concert there in L.A. last Friday night. Yeah, that is super cool. <laughs> I would, I would love that. I, you know, they don't, you know, they don't do that around here. I mean, like, that's Los Angeles, of, of course. So, you know, they have their Philharmonic and London and all these other places. So, mm. hopefully, at some point, I'll get to uh, see one of the. Yeah, I've, I haven't seen Superman the movie to um, like Superman in concert, but I have seen other films and some of the uh, cartoons, like the uh, Looney Tunes done with the uh with a live orchestra uh <laughs> playing to screen uh and they it is phenomenal to go and see even if you've seen the movie multiple times uh, just knowing that there's a live orchestra playing there as you're going along is quite cool so uh, yeah it's definitely worthwhile uh, if you get to see one of those so thank you to douglas for sharing those photos with us and uh looks like a great time was had by all so uh yeah amazing stuff as kenneth says in the comments very cool. Yeah. Any live, any live entertainment is great. Yeah, I'm happy. Any live, whether it's a play or, or you know the symphony or whatever. Exactly. Any yeah. live entertainment. Hundred percent. I couldn't agree more. I love going to watch live bands and those kinds of musicians, what have you. It's really cool. And I'm happy to say that your video and your audio is caught up. So uh, your internet there is uh, is doing well. It's not bad. Okay, great. Yeah, it's all good. All right, so uh, we're, that's all there that really has we, we have on the movie side of things. We also don't really have much on the television side of things because, as we know, Superman and Lois won't be on our screens until around September, October for its fourth and final season. So we wait for that. We still don't know uh, when My Adventures with Superman, the animated series, will return for its second season. So And that'll be on Adult Swim, so we kind of wait. Uh, obviously, there is a comic book series coming out that will bridge the gap between season one and season two of that animated series, which we spoke about last week. But as for uh, anything else to do with the television side of things, we're kind of waiting and uh, hoping for further news. So we've only got comic books and action figures and other things to get onto, but it's a good time to jump in and do our fan favorite segment of our show. So let's jump in and do that early on in the, sh in the show tonight. All right, and uh, yes, Justin, I am real at the moment. So is Mark. We are not AI characters. 
Uh, so uh, you can be assured of that. But then I could just be saying that as an AI character. So that's true. I don't know, but uh, yes, I am Neo. Uh, I can't speak for Mark really. I mean, you know, he's in an undisclosed location, so it could be that's right. You know, using some high-end technology and making it look like the internet is not working just to make us feel like it's real. Exactly. I'm I'm a lot cl more clever than you think. Mm, evil genius. Yes. All right. Well, uh, let's get into the fan favorite segment of our show. And Mark, what was our question from last week? Last week's question was, what do you think of the S-Shield for the new Superman movie? Yeah, what was your favorite part of the S-Shield? Uh, I guess because we have to frame it in a fan favorite version. Uh, so uh, we had a couple of people respond to this one. So let's get into it. Yes, Shane Sparkman wrote, I really like the new design for the upcoming movie. My only real concern is the co color palette. I feel that the colors shown in the image are too dark. If James Gunn is truly uh, drawing more inspiration from the comic version of Superman, I think he should steer clear of the Man of Steel style darkness. Dark works for Batman, not for Superman. That is just my opinion. Thank, thank you for your time and for, and for always giving us a great show. Oh, thank you, Shane. Yeah, very good. Uh, it is really hard with these kind of photos to get a sense of the color. Um, you know, color is really representative depending on the light, the shade, the location. Um, you know, it's, it, and it can, the same suit can look different depending on the, the setting, the lighting. So I wouldn't take too much from the color spectrum on this photo. Other than to say there's red, yellow, and blue in the costume, that's fantastic. Yes. And it does look a little lighter than the Man of Steel from, from this photo anyway. Yes. I think. I agree. I agree. So, uh, yeah, we'll wait and see just exactly what the colors look like on screen. Again, there can be adjustments in post-production. You know, we know that filters and things are put on to make things look darker or lighter and different shades. So we'll wait and see. But thank you very much, Shane, for your comment. JP Rocha was next up. Uh, JP said, I like the new Superman shield, minimalist and streamlined. <laughs> Just like his answer. There you go. And then Alfie Fal Falsitelli. I love the shade of red and blue they're going with in the pattern on the fabric. I like the yellow border like the original shield had. I would have liked something to indicate the bottom curve of the letter S, but otherwise, so far everything they've put us, everything they've shown us, is getting me pumped for the summer of 2025. Yeah, thank you, Alfie. Um, I agree. I would have liked to have seen. I'm a big, you know, I've said I'm a traditionalist. I like the uh, the classic logo or the one that's the most familiar to everybody with the serifs on the S. You know, that top little kind of uh, triangle shape and then on the bottom that rounded bulb um, mm. but I, I do like the Kingdom Come logo I always have um, but uh, it, you know it's still very reminiscent of the S and I do like the fact that there is a yellow border around the shield because again that kind of brings out the S shape uh, a bit more the fact that the red is framed by a yellow border I think I like that definitely right. Lorenzo Valdez wrote, I dig the image we got of David Corrin Sweat's S-Shield. While it does not, of course, feature the elaborate Kryptonian texturing of Henry Cavill's, it does seem to find a middle ground with some distinctive texturing of its own. Mark is so right about the framing of the image being reminiscent of Superman for all seasons. There are a couple of panels in the story, which I'm going to bring up now, that uh, he sent us. Here we go. Um, turn that off there. Oh, that's my image. Uh, where's... Lorenzo's image, here we go, um, goes on to say, uh, there are a couple of panels in the story in which Tim Sale drew close-ups of the S-Shield framed very similarly to what we see the image of Corrin Sweat's S-Shield. James Gunn repeatedly referencing Superman for All Seasons is one of the things that makes me most hopeful about his take on Superman, so I see this as a big positive. Yep, I agree, there are very much similarities in the way that this was framed, uh, for the photo so uh yeah yeah i well, like i had said um right after it had, it had come out i read superman for all seasons and i saw that and i said wait a minute mm. that looks familiar 
So I thought maybe that he could have, you know, I don't know whether he took it from there or not, you know, but uh, it does look, it does look similar. Indeed. All right. Next up. Hector Lopez wrote, I like it. Looks a lot like Kingdom Come Superman. And if this is the route James Gunn is going, we might have a great film. Yeah. You, uh, thank you very much to Hector, Lorenzo, Alfie, JP and Shane, who sent in their thoughts on the S-Shield for Superman, the upcoming 2025 film. We appreciate your thoughts on that. Uh, the image on the right there is my representation. I think it's probably not exactly uh, to scale. I think the bottom yellow area is probably um, less high, if you like. I think the, the uh, red panel across the middle probably is a bit thicker than what I've drawn it in that shield but otherwise a, a similar type of representation um, to the, uh, the image that James Gunn sent us. So uh, very much, I said, as I said, reminiscent of the Kingdom Come logo, but with the yellow background and a yellow border. And yes, there is a pattern through it. Obviously, um, you know, it's not just a plain material, uh, Lycra, like Christopher Reeve, uh, had and uh, not as detailed as Man of Steel's or uh, even Brandon Routh's, but uh, still a pattern there that kind of has a bit of texture to it. Definitely, and it's still a very recognizable look. I mean, it's you know, it's not something that's just far out there. It's it's very recognizable. Exactly, it still screams Superman to the general public. It's just a stylized version of what we're more familiar with, um, but yes, still definitely Superman. All right, so our new fan favorite question for this week is, what is your favorite Superman clock, watch, or timepiece? We're uh, kind of going back to some of the things that we used to ask uh, in regards to some of the things in your collections. So uh, have a look. I think we might have asked a similar question before, but this is encompassing any type of clock timepiece that you might have, whether it be watch, whether it be a clock, whether it be something else altogether. There have been quite a few different watches and clocks and uh, different things released over the years. So let us know what your favorite Superman clock, watch, or timepiece is. Get involved in the fan favorite segment of our show. The email address to send your responses to is info at supermanhomepage.com. That's info at supermanhomepage.com. So get involved in the fan favorite segment of our show. All right, uh, I'm going to now jump into the This Week in History segment. So bear with me as I bring up my notes. Come with me now, my son, as we break through the bars of your earthly confinement, traveling through time and space. All right, so here we go. Let me see if I can manage this once again. We are jumping right back to March 1994, where this week in history, we saw, let me see if I can get the images up correctly. Uh, something needs to be turned off there. Turning that off. We jump back to Action Comics number 72, where uh, the, really a weird cover, but uh, the main story is Superman and the Super Movers. Um, and then there was a couple of story backs, backup stories as, as was wanted in the time. Vigilante, Super Sleuth, McF McFooey, Congo Bill, Mr. America, and Zatara. But the Superman story and Superman on the cover there was Superman and the Super Movers. I don't know what Superman is doing to that man there. It's weird. I don't know. What is that? Like he's bouncing is he some shooting kind of something rays. from his... Yeah. Yeah, he's shooting rays from his... Look at that. That is strange. Unknown Golden Age uh, superpower. Yeah, exactly. So uh, that's a weird one, but uh, that was back in 1944. All right, then we jump through nothing in 1954. So March 1964, this week saw the release of Superman number 169. And there were three stories, The Infernal Imp, The Man Who Stole Superman's Secret Life, and the cover story, The Bizarro Invasion of Earth. kind of uh, seeing as how we just had a bizarro story in action comics. 
why not throw one in here? That's right. Well, exactly. <laughs> so why not? Cesaro uh, back in 1964. Uh, Jumping ahead to March 19th, 1974, we saw the release of Superman number 276, in which we have a story written by Elliot S. Magan, drawn by the great Kurt Swan, uh, Make Way for Captain Thunder. <laughs> Captain Thunder. For, for a second, I thought it was uh, Captain Marvel, but... Well, it obviously is, but there's... Obviously it is, know. but well, no, but but the she the um the, the he doesn't have uh, the lightning on me, yes. so, so I'm not sure. Yeah, very interesting. Are they, yeah, I don't know. By 1974, did DC have the rights I, to Captain Marvel? I thought they did by this stage. I think they might have. That's why. That's why I'm a little confused as mm. to whether that's supposed to be uh, Captain Marvel or not. Well, there you go. So. Uh, now known as Shazam, obviously, of course. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Then in 1984, we jump through to March 22nd, 1984, when we saw the release of Supergirl number 20. And there were m a multitude of guest stars in this issue, written by Paul Kupperberg with art by Carmine Infantino. Uh, the Justice League of America, Wonder Woman, The Flash, Green Lantern, Aquaman, Green Arrow, Adam, Hawkman, Black Canary, Elongated Man, Red Tornado, Zatanna, Firestorm, Martin Stein, Teen Titans, Wonder Girl, Beast Boy, Cyborg, Starfire, and Terror all made appearances in this special issue of Supergirl back in 1984. Do we know why it was so special? <laughs> uh, no idea. Yeah. I do remember the book at this at this time. I remember, I remember reading it. I don't don't yeah. I don't know if I read this one though. And uh, Supergirl with the headband, Michael's favorite. Book. Yes. <laughs> All <laughs> right. Uh, let's go. Let's have a look at also uh, jumping forward to March twenty second, nineteen ninety four. Saw Supergirl number four, and uh, this is obviously the Matrix Supergirl, written by Roger Stern. Uh, Pencils by June Bigman and Inca Jackson Geis. Uh, yeah, I uh, Supergirl looking very punk rock there on the cover. <laughs> yeah, I remember that's uh, that was in the miniseries, and she. This is when she was found found out about Lex and that he was you know a real bad guy, and so she went all crazy and transformed into uh, this wild woman. <laughs> Yeah, crazy. So, uh, yeah, still trying to see why my settings for my microphone are so low. Um, bear with me. I will try to figure that out. I haven't changed anything on my side of things. So uh, let me make sure the microphone's plugged in properly. Uh, let me get the screen side of things. Uh, a bit glitchy. My listing might be so low. No, it's, no, it's very low. Are you, the, are you there? I can't hear you. <laughs> what about now? Okay, yeah. Is that better? Yeah, but it's been okay on my end, so I don't, okay. you know, I don't know. Justin's saying he takes the sponge off, but I don't think it's a sponge, so. Yeah. Let's have a look. Uh, all right, um, that's the settings for, let's have a look for a microphone. Uh, sound, sound is full blast. Uh, there we go. How about now? Oh, that wow, that's be loud. Yeah. That's yeah. going to be heaps better. Sorry, folks. Yeah, the, the settings were turned down for some reason. So that is better for everybody. Let me know. I'm sure I'll hear it nice and soon, uh, very soon if that was the problem. It should be yeah. back to normal now. I don't know why the, the the levels were dropped down. So thank you for bringing that to know. my attention. All right. So yeah, that was Supergirl number four. All right. Jumping also to uh, March twenty second, nineteen ninety four. We are 
looking at Superman number 89. The title of this story was Desperation, written by Dan Jogans, uh, with and drawn by Dan Jogans with inks by Joseph Rubenstein. This uh yeah, still looking at Superman with those increased powers at the time. Yes, that was. Um... Do, we have, do we have that up? Is it not coming up? What's happened? Have we. Oh, sorry. Oh, Here we go. I've missed my cue. Oh, there it is. Okay. There's, the, there's the cover. <laughs> yeah, all too right. Many things happening all at once here. Yes. Okay, so number. yeah, Superman number 89. Then jumping to March 17th, 2004, we have Adventures of Superman 608, uh, 626, which saw the Superman story titled Tempest, and there was a backup story by of the Metropolis SCU titled Small Hours, Long Days, and uh, this was a very famous cover as well. Yes, I you know I know I read this story and for whatever reason I can't I can't remember I know I read it but I just can't remember everything that was going on at the time. Yeah, this was uh, Mike Turner cover, uh, and right. it was Superman coming back from that candle uh, where he had that motorbike and that suit, and this is obviously him ripping open that coming back to his normal suit. So that was oh, Superman. Right. 626 we jumped then to march 2004 for superman batman number eight and this was a title story titled alone obviously still on the supergirl coming to earth story written by jeff Loeb with art by michael turner and uh obviously batman featuring in this story uh with superman for superman batman number eight yeah this is i i think this was was this the first issue of her her appearance it might be yeah i think you're right there yeah uh, also that same week we saw superman secret identity number three released and uh this was titled fortress uh written by kurt busiek with art by Stuart Nimonen. and uh yeah that was a th issue number three then we jump to 2014 so 10 years ago this week, we saw the release of Scribble Noughts Unmasked, A Crisis of Imagination number three. Uh, don't think I read that one. But also so that same week, we saw Supergirl number 29, Inner Demons. Uh, this is when uh, Supergirl was, uh, yeah, the Red, the Red Lantern, Lantern story. Yeah. Uh, because she's always angry, and anger is obviously the Red Lantern thing. So that was Supergirl number 29. And then that same week, we also saw Superman Unchained number six, uh, which I was uh, drawn by Jim Lee and obviously with arts by Scott Williams. Yes, I read. Uh, A good series. Superman I read Unchained. the. Um, oh, what do you call it? The, the hardcover. All of right. That. I, I, yeah, I, th I thought it was all right. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't anything that special at the time. Fair enough. And in the real world, uh, we had Monday, March 18th, marks the release of or the anniversary of the release of Zack Snyder's Justice League, which was three years ago on this day, believe it or not. Yeah, it seems... Uh... Seems longer. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, premiered on HBO Max, uh, March eighteenth. Right. Wow. Yeah. And I remember watching it over a period of a few days. Same. Didn't. Could yeah, do it all in I one sitting. Yeah. No. No. Impossible I mean, I'll, I'll say this: it was better than the theatrical, I think. But beyond that, it was just you know. It was just a curiosity for Zack Snyder to show what he wanted to do originally with, um, you know, with his vision. I enjoyed the film as a whole more than the theatrical cut, but I didn't enjoy Superman's portrayal as much as the theatrical cut. I thought he was more upbeat in the theatrical cut. Uh, oh, he was definitely more upbeat. Moustache uh, notwithstanding. Moustache gate. <laughs> 
Also, uh, this week we uh, is the anniversary of the release on uh, of the Crypt TV series Krypton. Uh, too short, uh, but Krypton premiered on March twenty first uh, back in what, what, what year was it? I'm trying to get my notes. Uh, March 21st in 2018. So what's that? Uh, seven years ago? Six years. Wow. Six, uh, six years ago, yeah. So, yeah, six years ago. So, uh, right. yeah, premiered on Sci-Fi in the USA on March 21st uh, and went for two seasons, uh, but should have gone longer in my opinion. So that was This Week in History, and that was everything that I had. Very good. So thank you for sticking with me and thank you for bringing up my audio issue fans. So uh, we're good. Good to go. Continue on for the rest of the show. And speaking of the rest of the show, we're going to take a quick break, play some messages, and then come back on the flip side to do the comic book side of the world of Superman, as well as some action figures and some auctions that you might want to know about. Stick with us. We'll be back right after this. We'll be back in a moment with the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. If you're enjoying Superman Homepage Live, then please like and share this video with your family and friends. Also, if you'd like to subscribe to our YouTube channel, then you can click on the bell to receive notifications whenever we post a new video. You can also join our YouTube membership program. Just click the Join button below. Or you can become a patron and support our website by going to patreon.com slash superman homepage. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's supermanhomepage.com, the number one Superman fan site in the world. Supermanhomepage.com. Covering the world of Superman from the 1930s to today. News, reviews, rumors, and reports. SupermanHomePage.com for all your Superman comics, TV shows, movies, cartoons, radio shows, and more. Everything you ever wanted to know about the Man of Steel and more. SupermanHomePage.com Thanks, Superman Homepage, for all the support over the years. I really appreciate it. I'm Matt Ballmer. I'm the voice of Superman and Superman Unbound, and this is the Superman Homepage. Right here on Superman Homepage. Hi, Steven. This is Lois Lane from The Daily Planet. Do you want to start a video podcast but don't know where to start? Or maybe you've been podcasting for a while, but you're bored with the traditional audio-only format. Either way, I've got just the thing. Ecamm Live is the number one choice for busy podcasters who want to easily create professional-looking video podcasts. But why? They're more engaging for your audience, and video keeps their attention, so they're more likely to stick around and become part of your community. Let me show you just how easy it is with Ecamm Live. You can drag and drop graphics right onto your show to make it more professional. And if you have a co-host or guests, bringing them onto your show is a breeze. You can even tweak the look of your guest video no matter where they are. And you can set up your scenes in advance so when your show starts, you can play your intro and easily switch between your scenes during the show. So it really simplifies your workflow and eliminates the need for a bunch of editing. Plus, your isolated audio tracks are saved right onto your computer along with your high-quality video files. So there's no more waiting for a link to download your files. They're right there. And once you're done, you can upload it to your syndication platform. It's time to give your audience what they really want. So if you're ready to become a visual authority and take your podcast to the next level with video, join the Ecamm fam. Thousands of podcasters have already made the switch. We're just waiting on you. Scan the QR code or go to supermanhomepage.com slash Ecamm. Coming from the farthest reaches of the universe to challenge the worst villains on Earth are the most powerful heroes ever in the Battle of the Superpowers Collection. Can it be the Supermobile on the attack? The Lexor 7 armed with kryptonite? Will the Supermobile repel those deadly rays? You bet. Ready for battle? Activate Ram! New from Kenner's Superpowers Collection. Vehicles and figures with power action, each sold separately. Flying lessons for Penguin? Fish bait for Luther? Can the Supermobile defeat the Lexor 7? You decide. And we're back on Superman Homepage Live, or as I said, you can go to supermanhomepage.com slash live if you want to call us and speak tonight and be part of the show for the past for the, the last 20 minutes. 
All right, so so let's get into uh, the comic book side of things. And if you're a comic book fan, here are the Superman comic books coming out this week. Let's take a look at this week in the comic books. Here is what you have to look forward to. Uh, let's have a look. We've got Super uh, Batman. Oh, sorry, before that, Ape Rule Special Number One. It's a one shot. It is obviously a ape monkey related special. Uh, to one yes. shot, as I said, it is available in variant covers. This one mimicking <laughs> the Crisis cover with Superman holding the body of Supergirl uh, instead of yeah. a banana skin. Uh, we've also got this yes. variant cover right there. Also out this week, Batman Superman World's Finest 25, the oversized 25th issue, comes in a range of different variant covers, so many of them, uh, some great looking covers as well including uh, one that we have featured before. There he is, Captain Kirk. Uh, so, uh, yes, there is um, a couple of variant covers there for that. Also this week, Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong number six. Uh, that is out in a number of variant covers as well. So that's one I'm looking forward to. And then on the collected, oh, before that, Superman number 12 is also out this week. Uh, a Race Against Time to Save Lex Luthor. And that is also available in a couple of variant covers, including this great Dan Jurgens wraparound cover uh, that I know Michael Bailey will be getting and more <laughs> variant covers there. Then uh, for some reason, Superman appears on a variant cover of Wonder Woman number seven, which is out this week. So I thought you might want to know about that. But then on the collected side of things, we have the Fourth World Omnibus Volume 2 hardcover out this week. Also out this week, Justice League, the New 52, Book 1, Trade Paperback. And Superboy, The Man of Tomorrow, Trade Paperback. They are all the comic books coming out this week for comic book readers. So make sure you check them all out. A few big bumper issues. Obviously, Batman, Superman, World's Finest, number 25, and Superman, number 12, being the peak ones in this week's releases. Yes. Uh, before I get into, you notice the background behind me is a green screen image, obviously, of an upcoming Superman comic book cover. I did have a green Superman shirt to wear in light of yesterday's St. Patrick's Day or Sunday's St. Patrick's Day celebrations. But because I'm on green screen, I was just a floating head with a microphone in front of me. So <laughs> I had to forego the green Superman T-shirt um, at the last minute uh, because I, of that technical issue but as i mentioned the background behind me tonight is one of the uh variant or one of the covers main covers for this the fall of the house of brainiac story that dc announced uh, leads to the countdown to absolute power this june in both action comics and superman and this is a obviously a big story that's coming up that will feature brainiac quite prominently uh in the upcoming uh Superman comic books. So let's have a look at some of those details right now. This June, Lobo, uh, super, sorry, start again. This week, this June, Superman, Lobo, and the Superman family make their final stand against Brainiac and the Brainiac Queen as DC's finale to House of Brainiac starts the countdown to absolute power this June. In Action Comics 1066, it's all hands on deck for the man of still in the Superman family now that the Brainiac Queen is alive. Brainiac has created his masterpiece and all bets are off as Superman and his teammates bear witness to a cosmic horror unlike anything they've ever seen. And after learning the true history of Brainiac, Lobo will have to choose between what side he is on before all hell breaks loose. Then on sale June 18th, uh, as part 5 of House of Brainiac uh, is written by Joshua Williamson, uh, also provides art for the issue's main cover. Uh, Action Comics 1066 also features variant covers by art with art by uh, Jorge Jimenez and other artists. Uh, Superman number 15, the stakes get raised even higher on June 25th as the incredible story reaches its climax. Uh, Superman is allied with Lex Luthor and together they figured out how to stop Brainiac and his queen, but it will take a great sacrifice. The Man of Steel and one of his greatest enemies will have to do the unthinkable to save their family and friends. This all leads directly into DC's blockbuster summer event 
absolute power. Thoughts? Well, first, you know, I, I've been thinking, what was the last Brainiac story that we had? Because I, I can't remember the last, or at least the last Superman Brainiac story. I mean, I know they, they may have been involved with the Justice League and all that, but I cannot remember the last, uh, the last Brainiac story. It's been years, I think. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It has been quite a while since Brainiac has featured prominently in the Superman comic books. So, yeah, a lot of variant covers here for the comic books, but um, uh, some interesting variants. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a big story that will also branch over, I think, into Green Lantern. There's the cover there for that. And Power Girl will also be getting involved in this House of Brainiac story. So uh, looking forward to just seeing what this is all about. And, uh, you know, when Joshua Williamson is involved, it's usually going to be a good story. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, House of Brainiac. Looking for, yep. Looking forward to that. And we'll obviously be re reviewing all of those here at the Superman homepage so uh, you can keep up to date on everything that's happening in the world of Superman on the comic book side of things. All right. Uh, speaking about comic books and great artwork, uh, this interesting piece is going up for auctions at Heritage Auction. Uh, it is by, obviously, the great John Bogdanov uh, with uh, inks. Uh, let me read the details on it. Uh, let's see here. It's So this is the cover for Advanced Comics number 47, which was the very first appearance of Doomsday uh, to the public. Not the first appearance in story, obviously. Uh, this is the first time that Doomsday was revealed to the public. Uh, cred for the cover of the comic industry distribution magazine, uh, previewing the upcoming death of Superman storyline. This image of the Man of Steel battling Doomsday was used by New York Newsday to break the story to the world that Superman was about to meet his end. Uh, the story received, obviously, unprecedented mainstream media coverage. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this image uh, drawn by John Bogdanov, uh, and it is available to go under the hammer at Heritage Auctions and is expected to sell for over $1,000. I think it's already well over that at the moment, but a very interesting piece and a great piece of artwork. Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, that's... Doug Yankee uh, is the, uh, the inker there. Yes. That, that, that's such a classic image that, that you know... Um, you know, the fact that it's... Uh, I'm sure it's going to sell for thousands... <laughs> of dollars oh, 100 sure i think it's already the current bid is 2100 us uh yeah. and i believe it's still got uh 17 days to go so you've got time to crack open that piggy bank and see just how uh -huh. many coins you've got in there exactly you never know but uh yeah now i mean just just classic just classic indeed. So, yep, definitely worth a piece that would be well worth owning. Uh, so uh, that is going under the hammer. Also at Heritage Auctions is a three-page letter that was um, written by Jerry Siegel. I do have the image here somewhere. Just give me a second and I will find it for you. Uh, this three-page letter was written by Jerry Siegel which in which he's talking or writing to artist Russell Keaton uh, about his idea for Superman. It was written in 1934 and it's Jerry Siegel explaining the whole idea of who Superman is and what he's all about and uh, try and, because at the time, I'll just make this a little bit larger, um, Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster were struggling to get the story sold to any uh, publishers and Jerry thought he might have better luck with a different artist, so he touched base with Russell Keaton, who was a popular artist at the time, and wrote him, him this letter. Uh, and Russell did Russell Keaton did draw uh, a number of panels as an idea to help out, and you know, to, of course, he was on board with this for a little bit. Uh, that didn't go anywhere else, and then Siegel and Schuster ended up going back to work together, and eventually, obviously, sold the rights. Uh, and Action Comics number no. one was published then in 1938, four years after. This letter was written, but a very historic and monumental piece of Superman history 
that uh, will be sold at heritage auctions and again this one is expected to sell for over a thousand dollars it will end in early april um, but at the moment it is at three thousand one hundred dollars wow i would you know i i didn't realize until not too long ago that uh jerry siegel took it to other artists to uh to see what he can do with that but uh Mm. Glad he went back to Jerry, to uh, Joe Schuster. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, interesting history behind the early days of Superman's creation and attempts to get him published. So that's the comic book side of things and uh, some interesting items up for auction. But on the comic, uh, sorry, on the collector's side of things from the action figures, McFarlane Toys has given us a first look at the upcoming Kryptonite Doomsday mega figure. Uh, this launch is for pre-order on March 20th, so a couple of days at select retailers. We'll let you know. Um, but uh, Kryptonite Doomsday Mega Figure. Go for yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's um, that's okay. Yeah. I mean, like, how much more does Doomsday need, seriously, to beat Superman? Exactly. He needs Kryptonite. Uh, yeah, you know, he could already kill Superman, and now he has Kryptonite. So, so yeah. You know, forget it. Exactly. You know? Uh, another interesting action figure that uh, is from McFarlane Toys uh, is this JLA Superman 7-inch scale action figure. Obviously, the Superman Blue figure from that Justice League of America era. This is uh, from Wave 12 of the DC Builder Wave from McFarlane Toys. It contains up to 22 points of articulation, four energy effects, and a display base. Uh, also comes with a collectible card with artwork on the front and the character biography on the back. Um, also included is a builder figure piece for the Plastic Man, uh, which obviously you need to get all the different figures in this wave to be able to build the Plastic Man figure from those pieces. Um, but yeah, this is when Superman had electric powers and was part of the Justice League of America stories from that era. And... Uh, while it was much derided at the time, it seems that people can't get enough of this design all these years later. Yeah, it's, um, I think it's, it's a popular, it's a popular design. I mean, I know at the time people were, you know, up in arms and, you know, and, and you know, it was kind of like when they announced he was going to die, you know, people were up in arms. Now he's got a new costume and new powers and people. It's like, you know what? It was a story. Just go along with it. Read it. Exactly. <laughs> it was just a story. And 100%. it just, you know, it was something different. You know, they wanted to try something different and they did. And it was all right, you know. Yeah, but, exactly. We had a great time covering it here at the Superman homepage back then, trying to yeah. do a document on all these powers and all that kind of thing. But yeah, uh, Justin says, where's the red one? Well, the red one will probably come down in wave 13, I imagine. Um, you know, Far be it for McFarlane Toys not to create a Superman or an action yeah. figure on something that's out there uh, in the world of comic books. So that is uh, the Justice League of America 7-inch scale action figure of the electric blue Superman. Now, uh, the Multiverses video game, uh, this was late last week, just after our show, uh, but the uh, game is getting its launch. I thought it had been launched already, but obviously it was just in beta mode. Uh, still in testing, but the platform, uh, the free-to-play platform fighter video game featuring an all-star cast of iconic characters will officially launch on May 28th and will release with a new PvE mode. Uh, here is a video giving you all the details on, or a little bit of the details on what is happening with the Multiverse, Multiverses launch. A core aspect of Multiverses is our wealth of iconic let me bring up the image, get rid of this image first, and then play you the video. So there you have it. You can watch the full video at our website. And to promote the upcoming release of Multiverses and the launch, uh, they're also teaming up with McDonald's. Uh, you can get Happy Meals. Uh, the, the toys or the collectibles that come with McDonald's Happy Meals are Multiverses related. And here is a promo for that. Some of your favorite characters are coming to McDonald's. Kick off the fun and choose your matchups with multiverses. 
now in your Happy Meal. Now you can choose a book. Whoops, so there it is. Uh, you can watch the full promo for that at, at our website, uh, official McDonald's Happy Meals Multiverses Collectibles. Uh, it's in the U.S. Uh, if it's not already in the U.S., it will be shortly. I think it already is. I've seen people already collecting them. And I think it's coming to Australia as well. If it's not already in Australia, I don't go to McDonald's. I don't eat there, but um, I might just drop by and have a look at what they have as far as promo material is concerned. But yeah, you can check out full details about this McDonald's Multiverses release at our website as well. Now, from before we wrap up this show, uh, the Superman homepage is offering fans a chance to own a free digital Metropolis poster designed by yours truly. I put my artistic talents to bringing you, where is it? I had the image ready to go. Here it is, a new uh, poster, Metropolis poster, available for fans of the Superman homepage who want to check out what uh, they can do to help promote and support the Superman homepage. All you have to do is become a patron of the proper level and you'll get this free digital Metropolis poster designed by me sent to you. It's limited to only 20 copies, so I'll only be sending out 20 copies of this digital poster to the first 20 patrons who take up the level of uh, $10 a month, and this showcases the city of Metropolis, bathed in the warm glow of the setting sun with a silhouette of Superman soaring high above the Daily Planet building. Uh, you can own this poster if you become a patron of the Superman homepage, just head to patreon.com slash Superman homepage and you could be the proud owner of this poster. Very, very nice. Yeah, I thought it was Great cool. image. Yeah, it's, there are, have been other similar ones. It's got that Art Deco type of uh, feel to it, but uh, mm -hmm. this was created solely by me and doesn't really break any copyright. Not that we're saying that. I don't that. think so. I mean, it's no. just a silhouette of a flying figure. Metropolis is a word that is used, and it doesn't say daily <laughs> planet. It's just a symbol of a planet, of a like a Saturn type globe. So uh, yeah, you can be a proud owner of that by supporting the Superman homepage. What a great way to make sure that the Superman homepage continues, and also be able to own something that looks pretty cool. But that's pretty much it for tonight's episode of Superman Homepage Live. I want to thank my co-host, Mark Lax. Thank you, Mark, uh, in your undisclosed location for taking the time out yes. to uh, be <laughs> part of the show tonight. Thank you, Steve. And thank you to our sponsors and patrons, Douglas Meacham, John Patrick Van Pelt, Tina Murray, and C. Ralph Adler. We appreciate your support. And don't forget, you can support those fine folks again by being a patron. Uh, find, join those fine folks by being a patron of our website. Simply head to patreon.com slash Superman homepage or click the join button on YouTube. But Mark and I will be back next week uh, for the final episode of March. So make sure you join us then for Superman homepage live on Monday, March 25th at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time for another episode of Superman homepage live. Until then, be sure to check out supermanhomepage.com for all your daily news updates on everything surrounding the Man of Steel. I'm Steve Yunus. On behalf of myself and Mark Lax, thanks for watching Superman Homepage Live, brought to you by supermanhomepage.com. Good night. <laughs>